Hello. We always get asked what's the difference between synchronous and ordered. So I'm going to give you a same part, synchronous and ordered, so you can see what the differences are. So for this one, we'll be part slightly different sheet metal, slightly different when it comes to assembly. So um, Solid 2023, I'm just going to hide that and make sure my Pathfinder is a decent size. Um, everything pretty much the same, got a few little, few little changes on me, icons up here and my own icons up here. So we're in synchronous modeling. Um, so synchronous modeling, we don't have a specific sketch environment. So if I want to go and sketch something, um, I need to just, just go and choose to sketch in the appropriate environment that I want on here. I can input the sizes to make sure that everything is the right kind of size that I want on here. I can go and draw my part however I want it. So I've got my part, I can then fence select and that will allow me to go and extrude that whatever size I want that to be. So for that one, I want that to be whatever the set sizes we want on there. These dimensions have all appeared on the model. Um, if we want to go and control the model, we can go and use, uh, we just go and place dimensions on our model as though this, as, as though this was just a normal kind of um, sketch. So ignore that it's 3D and just go and choose the geometry that you want the dimension on and have the dimension on there. What I find quite useful is top of the list on here we've got PMI and dimensions. We can go and use a, use a shift select on those, right click and set those as driving or lock dimensions. So we can do that quite quickly on there. We can also make quick changes as well. So we can see we get here I've got this feature that I actually want to be a slightly different size um, position on there. So I'm going to go and move that to exactly where I want that to be. Now I want to go and create another feature. I want to create a feature on here. We don't have to draw a rectangle. All we have to do is split this face using what we call regions. So if I go and lock to that face using the F3 key, put a line across there, choose that region. I can then go and extrude that um, and go and take that to the appropriate size that I want on there. If we do make any changes, we can we can click on the dimensions directly, choose the face that I want to move. Do I want to move the bottom face or do I want to move the top face? You can see our arrow changing on here. And we can use that to go and make the appropriate change that we need on there. We have got other face relate options that allow us to lock ground faces, ground features, etc., as well, which, which can be really useful. If we don't add a dimension, we can easily go and create a dimension, choose the locked option, and then go and add the appropriate size that we want on there. We didn't actually define this in the end, um, so I kind of moved that across. Um, and now I want to kind of um, move that um, and decide um, where that wants to be on there. So um, let's just go 15 on there for now. Okay, so next um, I'm going to go and put some rounds in here. So um, with the round command um, on solid edge, we select edges that we're interested in. If we press whatever size we want and press the tab key, that gives us like a, a live preview of what that's going to look like on here. So we can go and choose the appropriate edges that we want on there. And then we've got those rounds on there and we're, we're good on there. Next, I want to go and put a cutout in. So this is Solid 2023. So um, extrude in both ordered and um, it's synchronous, both allows us to add and cut all in, all in one go. So for this, I'm going to go and put a, um, I'm going to go and extrude, actually, no, let's go and pop a sketch in there first. So I'm going to sketch on that face, choose the edge on there. So I've then got my centre position on there. I've then got the size that I want. Now I'm going to go Control H to get to my normal view on that. And I'm going to do a, a block there and a block there. I'm just going to go and add a couple of simple relationships to make sure that that size is correct on there. And then we want to make sure that is 8 mil on there. We don't, we don't really need to define the actual sizes that we need on here. So uh, maybe I want that size to be 34 on there. And maybe I want this size from there to the end point on there to also be 34. So we've got those sizes. But what we can do now is we can fence select and go and choose to extrude these. So I'm going to fence select those and then I'm going to use control to go and fence select those as well. We can then use the arrow and then move that. We can use the shift key to switch it to cut 
Um, and we can use a space bar to go and change it to symmetrical or the other way around. So shift for symmetrical. And we can go and choose that. And that has now given us our cutout that we want on there. Okay, so next what we're going to have a look at is doing some more rounding. So I'm going to do some rounding. And um, I want to do um, all rounds on here. I want to click on that. I do three melt. But you can see it's actually rounding internal faces that, that, that we've just done. So what we, what we want to do is just press escape to come out of the command and control Z if it's finished that. What I actually want to do is temporarily take these faces out. So within Synchronous, we've got this really nice tool called Detach. So I can go and select those faces and then we can right click and choose Detach. That's going to take those out of the geometry temporarily, allowing us to go and do our round that we did before. So if I go and do all rounds on that, that's going to go and pop all the rounds in on that, and then and then accept, and then finish. Actually, I want to go and put another round in on here as well. So that one, I'm going to choose the edge corner. I'm going to do a six mil on that one. It's actually created our round the wrong way around. So the great thing about Solid Edge is we can click on that face, right click on it, and we can reorder it. So it's as though we created those the other way around in our ordered modeling on there. So some really cool stuff that we've got on there. Next, we can go and find the appropriate command. So you can see this cutout is hidden at the moment. We can right click on that and choose to attach that. And that is then going to go and pop that back into the geometry that we've got on there. Next, I'm going to create a hole. So um, holes are very much model based. So if we go and create the appropriate hole that we want, we can go and just place the hole. Again, if, if I want to go and do a pattern, I can go and choose a pattern. I can go and decide that's going to automatically pick the face that that holds on. I could un un unlock over here and then I can go and choose what that pattern is going to be, what kind of option I want. So I want to do a fixed pattern. I'm just going to zoom this and say my X direction is that way. My sizes are right. I just need to choose my spacing on that. So I've got seven and one. And then I just right click to accept that pattern on there. If I want to go and change the hole, I can click back on pattern. Um, on there and that's going to allow me um, to um, or maybe if I need to go and change the hole even so if I click on the hole click on M10 and then decide what kind of hole we want um, if it's if it's on the list great if it's not we can go into our main dialog box and go and choose the type of hole that, the type of hole that we want so I'm going to choose a general screw clearance M12 close and that's going to go and create our holes for us on there. So the last little thing we need to have a look at is um, when we actually, when we're told about this, this actually needs to twist back 10 degrees. So I'm going to go and make the appropriate change on here. So I'm going to select the geometry that I'm interested in. And then I'm going to choose the edit that I want. So notice there's all sorts of things going on with the screen. This little design intent is telling me that the design intent is possibly stopping me do what I want. So we can see that we've got our design intent is doing something weird on there. So I'm going to turn that back on and turn the dimensions off instead and see what um, and see what that does for us. So um, as we go and make the changes, uh, we're going to see how that is going to go and move that part um, fully um, yeah, correctly as we want on there. So we can see that we've got we've got these issues, we've got the dimension. So if I go and turn that dimension off, and I said I want to tilt that back, obviously maybe not that far, maybe just five degrees or so. And that is now right on there. We'll probably we'll, you'll see that obviously that dimension is at an angle, so but our height is still going to be 34 on there. So that's our first item. So next I'm going to do a new one. I'm going to do the same kind of thing in ordered. And we can see how the steps are going to be different on ordered. So on ordered, um, I'm going to I'm going to draw it as though we don't know about the angle change that we're going to do at the end. So I want to do an extrude. I'm going to go to the the sketch that I want. I'm going to choose my elements. I'm going to do it as quick as I can. So I'm not going to try and make it look not as good. And then we're going to go, what was that, 150 by 
34 on there and then let's dimension that up um, let's go 50 mil on that we can always go and change that so we can now close our sketch um, we don't need to trim these up in order um, sometimes I see people trimming these up um, and making life quite a bit more awkward on there okay so now we want to um, have a look at putting this hole in so um, it's, it's going to be either a hole or a cutout depending on what we want but I'm going to go and create this as a, as a hole on here I'm going to go into my hole options and for this one uh, we've obviously got a hole we've got different options um, or um, we can just specify the, uh, the size that we want um, but I'm just going to go through to there and I'm just going to do this as a drill size I'm not sure if we actually get that big if we don't go that big we just set that to millimeters on there and then we go and do uh, 34 on there we can also go and add our tolerance on there as well so we can go and add our tolerance on there um, and go and say what that's going to be on there so um, I'm going to go horrible um, and then let's click OK snap that to the center point that's all good close that sketch and then that's our hole in situ on there so next we need to think about this uh, this next part that's going up um, so for this I'm going to extrude this is going to this is going to require a sketch but I am actually just going to do similar to what we've done in synchronous synchronous is a really good learning tool that allows us to kind of think about how how we could possibly do this in order so um, the great thing is that we can just have a line which will allow us to decide which side and which direction we want that to go on there and I'm doing my calculation directly in there so there we go um, the hole I obviously got something wrong there so I'm just going to make sure that my extent step is correct on there through all and click OK on there there we go that's better so we've got the rest of those cutouts as well so um, I'm going to follow the same kind of stuff that I did with the um, with the synchronous on here I'm going to use two cuts on here we can do similar 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 items to do the same kind of thing on here I'm going to link up to that geometry on there I'm going to mention these both up as let's just make sure we get the dimension command both up as 8mm um, let's dimension that up to there 34 and there to there again we'll do that 34 close that sketch and because we're in 2023 we've got our add and cut option so spacebar allows us to go and switch um, between that and shift allows me to go and change that to symmetric all in one go so a lot of the cool stuff from synchronous is now available in order there Next, some rounds. I'm going to choose round 15. I'm going to choose the, um, the side view, and I'm not going to do the edges like that. I'm going to have to just select these edges separately. In sheet metal, there's some really cool stuff we can do when we're doing that because we can just fence select the appropriate items that we want on that. Okay, here we go. Just double check we've got all those that one on that okay so next we can do those other rounds so but we're actually in order this time aren't we so for this one um, I can do a go to so this is on the new context toolbar on there that will go and take a go to on there well actually we can probably go all the way to that first feature on there um, now actually we need that one so let's have a look can we go and um, can we do a go to on there and can we go and drag that hole down so we're having to think about what we're doing a little bit more to get this correct on there. So we can go to that point on there. I'm using a custom shortcut for go to, which is F4. Um, you can create that by right clicking on any command and choose customize a ribbon and then go into the, the keyboard shortcut option on there. And then round. And then we're going to go and choose all rounds on there. And we're going to do three melt, similar to what we did on the other one. Obviously, this is going to go and cause a bit of an issue because of those rounds that we've got. So let's have a look. 
see what, see what we can do. If we're not sure where we can move these features, we can right click on it or F7 if, you've got, if you use a shortcut and we can find out where that goes to and from. So, I, so that means that I can go and move that up to there, no problem. So notice all these little things we're having to think about, which we didn't have to think about when we were doing this in ordered. So now I can do a go to on the round and then we can go and do our three mil. Um, make sure that's on all rounds and then click on that. And then we can do our next round and we can go and choose this edge on here that we want on there and we need to do six on there. That round obviously we've um, we've done that the wrong way around. That's not a problem. We can go and drag that round up and specify where that round is going to be on there. When, we, when we're dragging stuff um, I always tend to go and take it to make sure everything's shown and that's reordered that round on there. So next I'm going to speed through placing this hole. So let's go and place our hole and we'll do our hole general screw clearance, normal, close even. And just make sure that extent step is through all. And then we can do our pattern. So notice our pattern is slightly different. We select our feature, accept, choose the face we want to draw our pattern on. Choose the pattern shape up here. So choose rectangular or circular. Click on the origin point and then drag that pattern up. So I'm dragging that pattern up to snap to there. And then I'm making sure that um, that key point is connected to that line. This distance doesn't really matter, uh, but it's nice just to kind of set that. If you've dimensioned it, you can just click back on the line on there and go and set these sizes the appropriate way. So obviously I need to go and switch these to one and seven to get that correct. I need to make sure that's on fixed as well. So one and seven. And that's got our sizes correct and then accept and then finish and then the next step is our rotate so um, if we go back and try and change that protrusion we're going to end up with a large problem if we try and move that we're going to end up with a bit of a problem so but the great thing about this is we've actually got synchronous modifications in here so we can actually go and rotate faces and we've got the different options. We can choose the face and then we can choose all sorts of different ways. So I'm going to choose this option to rotate faces. Except we're choosing a synchronous rotate. So this is going to give us the same kind of options that we had before. And then that's going to allow me to go and do that rotate in the same kind of way. So let's go and take that back minus five. Accept and finish. Just be very careful if you do try and do a pattern because the pattern is actually straight up there. If you try and pattern an assembly um, in here, just be very careful and check that your pattern has patterned correctly um, on there because we've we've since rotated that. So do we? Um, yeah. So it might not follow the rotated lines. Just be very careful of that. Okay, so that shows us those two different ways of creating part ever so, ever so slightly different sizes. Um, but you can see we've got two different ways of doing it, but with the benefit of using the some of the things we've learned from synchronous now in ordered. So even though synchronous is great, ordered is now a very viable way of creating parts like this with that rotate option. Hope that's useful. Thank you.